almost unstoppable. He's the best one-day batsman in the world. He's got all the shots. Confidence points. His confidence is high. He just blasts the ball to all points. See the same shot and out. That looks to be a brilliant catch. Look at Dean Jones. Dean Jones will get a standing ovation from this team going out the Gabba. What a magnificent spectacle it was. I remember at Brisbane, it was uh, you know 145. I think it's, it's still equal with Ricky Ponting, the highest one-day scorer for Australia. And um, I just had a really good day out. I knew that the gods are with me. And um, I think at three, I, I took on Phil DeFraser, who's got a wonderful throw, and very quick to the ball. And oh, that's a cracking shot. It's well run and well thrown. Dean Jones has just beaten that return to Freitas right next to the stumps. Magnificent return. If you do it slower, slower on tape, I was actually run out by that far if they had the third umpire. And um, But if you do it at a normal speed, I don't think he could actually even give me close to Look being out. That throw. My goodness, that's out. That is out. Oh, I, I hit Bicknell for one big one over his head and I hit hitting him into the crowd. I was hitting him one-handed. It was just... I had a day out. So that one is better timed. He's certainly going after Philip De Freitas. In the air and away from Angus Fraser. Two boundaries from two balls. Ian Jones starting to hit his stride. He's such an experienced player, Dean Jones. He can easily upset an inexperienced young bowler like Martin Bicknell. He looks to get on the front foot, but then he's, when, it's, when it's dropped just slightly short, he rocks back quickly. Eddie Hemmings, who I thought was the best bowler the other evening. Yeah. That's a really good shot. Hemmings did nothing wrong there, but uh, Jones very quickly gave himself some room for the stroke, anticipating that it might have been round about middle and off. Cut it. I would say off the stumps and played it quite well. No protection outside the circle on the offside. Good shot. Dean Jones always looking to make room. Oh, he smashed that one. That will, that'll end up in Coco's. It's gone miles. It's a big six. Huge six there from Dean Jones. He's decided to let loose. And he's smashed it down towards that sign down there. And didn't he enjoy that? Yes, that uh, cleared the dog track as well as the uh, fence. And landed way back in the crowd. Down the wheel he goes again, that's straight, it's going to be into the fence on one bounce. One bounce into the fence, very straight and very flat. And 50 for Dean Jones, there is a rope uh, down there under the sideboard. 101, the partnership between Marsh and Jones. Hit that in the air as well and uh, it's going to go to the fence too. So Jones really is blasting himself around this ground. It's brute force on occasions. Hemmings won't know what to do in a second. Down the wicket he came there and have a look at that white ball fly. Jones gets that through the gap. That's for beautifully placed. He was stretching to get to it. Got it right off the middle of the bat and raced away for four. A little bit of Dean Jones genius here, pitching well outside the off stump. You wouldn't have that shot recommended in the coaching manual. Well, this is going to uh, be a severe test for the youngster, Martin Bicknell. <laughs> They're the ones uh, you need to have stick. And to add insult to injury, he's gone back for second. 
and yet the ball was gathered I reckon just inside the 30-yard circle that is extraordinary running between the wickets well a big slash at this by Jones the keeper just about gets it but he's so quick and alert and alive look at him he's running and scampering and that's what makes him such a dominant personality there's always something happening magnificent there's a man at deep mid wicket straight onto the dog track well that's an absolutely terrific shot I know he's played some good shots today and he's in good form but uh, he's so quick onto anything short he rocks back and he's hit that with terrific power into the crowd and over the man at uh, fine leg and I'm not too sure why he was in there rather than being back 15 yards on the boundary well Martin Bicknell again straight down the leg side trying to ball a foolish Yorker but it's going down the leg side and gives Jones a free hit over the fielder and I think the fielder's inside 10 yards inside the boundary because they're so concerned with the quick running of Dean Jones that he's getting twos all the time they're trying to keep him away from the strike but it doesn't matter where they put the fielders if the bowler does not bowl the ball in the right spot which has got to be Yorkers on middle stump the pressure is getting to them out there on the field now I'm not surprised mind you they've withstood it uh, to a large extent we're now into the 45th over it's not surprising it'll be a fumble or two he's made 122 from 125 balls oh just reach out and catch it Jeffrey what a magnificent hit and I can tell you something else about that with that six Dean Jones is batting a thousand in this innings. A magnificent blow. He's such a clean striker of the ball, that's the thing. He, he hits it so cleanly with a full flowing back lift and right through the ball. Well, he's just tearing Martin Bicknell a pass, he really doesn't know where to go well, he smashed that one away too, that's six to a real flat six a magnificent shot from Dean Jones oh, I tell you what, the man's on fire he'll be batting a thousand before he can blink an eyelid he'll be three or four of them looking down the barrel of a thousand, ten thousand dollars each it was a crowd killer job, that one. It went in at the rate of knots. The guy's uh, got the ball in his hand. I don't know if he actually caught it. I would doubt very much that he caught it. He was lucky he didn't catch it in the teeth. Uh, he got it in a hurry, so he didn't do badly. Well, this is out. It's got to be out. Yes, at last, he's got him. He's mishit one for a change, and that's gone straight to mid-wicket. Tuckdale's taken the catch, and Dean Jones will get a standing ovation from this pack ground here at the Gabba. What a magnificent spectacle it was. A magnificent innings. There will be those that will be reminded from time to time that he was probably out when he had three. But from that moment on, he has played superbly. It was my seventh uh, one day, uh, seventh hundred, and my last for Australia, unfortunately. Um, the next one was for the world team uh, versus Australia. But, uh, it's just a wonderful game for us, for everyone, and uh, oh, and I can remember it was so hot. God, it was hot too, and uh, they made it easier now for the Australians. They've got lights there at the at the Gabba, and they play it under lights. <laughs> and it's going to be Dean Jones to bowl the final over. And a great day here with the bat, now having a bit of fun with the ball. AB often gives little presents to everyone around the ground. He actually asked, said, Dean, I have a bowl. So I thought it was perfect. So I actually bowled the ball, and... Hemmings went down the wicket and I think Heels meant to miss it. Like Heels doesn't miss stumpings, does he, for God's sake, and missed an easy one like that. And uh, it would have been nice to get a wicket, but I've got three one day international wickets, but uh, it would have been nice to finish it off that way. And Healy upsets the timber.
Lovely shot. Beautifully played down the ground. This outfield is quick. That'll go into the boundary of mid-on for four. And Dean Jones now just beginning to blossom. And he can well, play when I went out to bat, I can remember during the innings that I want to get 100 today. No matter what, I want to get 100. With the charges, beats the bowler, beats mid-on through the legs. Jones pulls. It's a four to square leg. The outfield very fast. Jones will be looking to punch one through the covers. We have a pitch delivery straight down the ground to bring up his 50. This time he just strokes it gently to mid off. Safely home. Well played, Dean Jones. Two for 237. 98 or 97 or 96 or something in the last over. Got a couple, and then with two balls to go, I tried to lift uh, De Silva over mid wicket, and I hit it too high, and the guy ran underneath it. I think Doctor Court got a bit of it and misjuggled the catch, and I ran back and got my hundred. He goes, but it's in the air. The man's going back. He's a good catch if he catches it. He's dropped it, so Jones comes up to a hundred. Drop. And the final over of the day, he was there, he got under it, Aravinda the silver, the bowler, and Dean Jones scores a test hundred on the WACA ground. And which is the worst thing you should have ever done. With the last over, you should be thinking of red inks and coming out the next day and getting your, your hundred. But uh, I remember instead of walking straight into the rooms, I walked straight upstairs in the dressing room and uh, I knew I'd done something wrong. I had my head down, I was bowed, I'm thinking, oh, I wonder what the guy's going to say to me. So after 15 minutes, I struck enough courage and AB was waiting for me oh, and gave it to me big time and who the hell do you think you are? Test cricket's the biggest thing I don't care against Sri Lanka even though they weren't a big team at that stage this is important you've got to know the importance of Test cricket and just let me have it five to ten minutes and um, well the next day I was too scared to play a shot and I patted up to Lebroy for a hundred and uh, didn't, I didn't add to my score overnight Yeah, I just dived to one side and, uh, you know, big Merv who uh, was struggling at that stage and, and Merv actually kept knocking over Hooper for a lock. Merv didn't think Hooper could bat. He used to stick it up him, what we call chin music, and then you'll feed him up one to see for what happened. And uh, I was happy to grab hold of that one. i tell you what, <laughs> didn't like the tongue in the air afterwards. And Hooper hits a catch straight to uh, Dean Jones at point. And Desmond Haynes must be uh, absolutely... Uh, distraught at the way the batsmen down the other end are playing. Well Merv always thought he could get knocked over Viv a fair bit and Viv had the new haircut or the lack of hair shall we say. He's uh, gone completely bald and uh, Merv often re said look can you keep your cap on because the reflection off the head is killing me when I'm running into bowl and that type of stuff but uh, didn't have a great series uh, that particular series but Merv had the wood on him a couple of times. 2,211 for Vivian Richards and the score moves along to 3 for 28. It's a beautiful stroke. Still, it's better for Merv to be up there if he's going to get a little bit of movement off the seam than uh, to be short. That's a good delivery from Merv Hughes. Gives us a good look at the new Vivian Richards haircut, which the crowd are appreciating. Vivian well aware of the comments that are coming out. Merv Hughes tried very hard to part that hair, which is not easy. I was a bit disappointed in the first dismissal at Bridgetown because AB just got out one grubber, hit the bottom of his bat. Oh, and that's got right under Alan Border's bat. He's gone right back. Malcolm Marshall is uh, very happy. Alan Border not quite so happy. He doesn't really know where that ball went. The crowd don't care. They just wanted to see a wicket, and Alan Border was the one they wanted to see go. And I thought, well, I'm just going to have to stick around here and just still be positive. And then I saw Mel Marshall bowl a real wide one. I just let it go, and it seemed back in a little bit, but there's no way. No, it wouldn't hit, hit another set of stumps. Yeah, he's given him out, padding up. It's a fairly ambitious shout. The ball was definitely coming in late. Started to move in in the air and kept going off the wicket, but he seemed to be a long way forward and outside off stump. That started a bit of a rot, and we got ro rock and roll from three for 100 to almost all out for 140, so. Well, 
Cooper has done it. Yeah, I went down the wet and drove in the back of my leg, went back on the stump, so there's no luck at all. But yeah, at least I was trying to hit the ball. I suppose you've got no comeback when you actually pat up to a ball, but uh, like I did in the first innings. But so luck didn't go with, with me on that, that particular way. Boundary for Dean Jones. And that's well hit. Right out of the ground. All series, I wanted to play like I did against the West Indies at Adelaide in 89 by taking them on and playing a little bit one day, former mate. And Greg Chaplin and Ian Chappell said to me before the innings, uh, any chance you just going out and hitting the ball instead of just blocking and trying to set up an innings like I say an AB would? I said, well, I've got nothing to lose. And at that stage, I was starting to smell a few things that there might be a few guys looking for my spot. So I said, right, here we go. I'm going to take them on. I don't care. And I don't know, caution <laughs> tends to not favour the brave at all. I took them on and uh, batted really well with Mark War, and it's probably the best I hit them for a long, long while. He's timed that one a little bit better. There's one of the runs that he needs. Patrick Patterson moves very quickly. He's coming back for the second, and there it is. 3,000 runs in Test cricket for Dean Jones. And Dean Jones gets his half century. Very good effort indeed. And Mark Waugh going straight. And it's called six. Hitting the uh, sideboard on the fall. But the board is in front of the... Uh, the boundary board is in front of the sideboard. Gordon Greenwich is out at mid-wicket, but uh, no chance of stopping that one. And that brings up 54 Mark War. And it long on, but it's going to clear him. Malcolm Marshall is the man back there. And it takes a piece of the fencing with it. leg before wicket, Marshall gets the wicket and a long partnership between the two of them has ended. Jones leg before and Australia are five for 342. The Caribbean is very hard to pick the ball up out of the backgrounds. It's very dark and, and shadows and, and, and he's just drilled this drive and Merv bowled it of course and, and it stuck at the left mid and it just stuck. And I remember running off the ground because I was being sledged by these West Indians. So I started running towards him and I threw the ball down and gave him a bit back. Well, would you believe that? What a marvellous catch. What an absolute blinder by that fielder, Dean Jones. Seven for 186. And Geoffrey Dijon said after the game, he said he just couldn't believe that uh, I could catch and so well, I haven't had any luck all series. Sorry, dudes, you just happened to, you know, cop, cop the best of me there. It's a good shot from uh, Dean Jones. Wasn't all that bad a ball. And Walsh has struck again. West Indies is a very hard tour. Firstly, you don't have any practice wickets. You don't have anything there to help you prepare for, the, uh, for a big test match. You can imagine Greg Norman going to a British Open, not being able to have a practice putt, or actually have a couple of balls on the practice tee. It's a very, very hard tour. And uh, yeah, Viv was Viv's last game in Antigua, and we got him for one and two, and uh, I think it might have been Terry Orland's last test match as well for us. Um, and Peter Taylor's probably for that matter. And uh, it was just a great comeback. Viv Richards just sledged Bob Simpson the week, uh, the week before at Barbados saying he's not my cup of tea and all that type of stuff. And we come back, joined forces, which is great, typical Australian team, and we knocked them over in four days. Now, I remember after the Barbados test, I said, congratulations, Viv, you deserve the Sir Frank Worrell Trophy. And he just said, you wait to, West, you wait to Antigua, man. We'll kill you down that wicket. We'll kill you. Well, we beat him in four days.
So he really hurt us, didn't he? But it was just a really ugly test series because there's so much racial abuse in the, in the, particularly from them. There's nothing was said by our guys, and I'll be honest with you right now, we might have said a few nasty words to them, but there wasn't one thing black was mentioned at all. But from their point of view, guys were walking down the corridors in the same hotels, weren't saying a thing to each other. And that's the wrong way of playing test cricket, I think. Well, he's got that one away. And uh, no point in running at all. It was a quick bouncer, and Dean Jones played a beautiful pull shot. Very good shot from Dean Jones. He has hit that superbly. I pride myself on making big hundreds. I think there's, um, out of every big hundred that I've made, about, it's something like 75% of the guys who make hundreds get out before 125. Now, I think there's a fitness thing, and, and it's the best time to bat is after 120, for God's sake. And, and I really make sure I take the one off the front of 100 and think I'm 25 and start building it up from then. And uh, it, it, was, uh, it was great to get 200 against the West Indies. Against that attack, it was special. There's an attempt at a Yorker. It's going away square towards the short boundary. Malcolm Marshall's down there. And uh, not quite making it. Got that one away fine, so poor old Malcolm Marshall's got to go in the other direction. And when he looks up from down there, he'll realise how far away the stumps are, but have a look at that throw. Three for 108. Got that one away, and into the fence it'll go as well. I don't think you're that uh, comfortable with that little gutter and uh, those sharp-ended pickets. No ball called, and Jones can come back easily for the two. And 50 for Dean Jones. That's a very timely innings for Dean Jones. He's had something of a mixed season. Well played, glorious on drive. Yes, that was a magnificent shot. Tremendous way to start against the new bowler. Doesn't do the bowler's confidence too much good, but have a look at the timing here and the placement. Used his feet, got to the pitch of the ball, and flicked it through the onside there. And into the fence it goes. Lovely shot from Dean Jones. To make this last run for a century more difficult. He'll be looking anxiously at the umpire. And that's his 100. Just come off the edge onto the pad. He looked back at the umpire. Two runs to Jones. He's 101. Well, that's a lovely shot. Beautifully timed. And into the fence down at square leg. Not even little Gus, Gus Logie could get across there quickly enough to stop that one. Lovely timing. That was an excellent shot. Picked off the pads. Really taking advantage of that short boundary. Probably the shortest one of the lot. Face Richards, who's staying around the wicket to him. And he slipped and missed it all. <laughs> really... Went a little bit too far there. The ball's going way down to the long boundary, and so they should be able to run four here. Very lush outfield, and as Patrick Patterson went for that ball, he slipped and uh, went sliding past it. Nice little bonus there for Dean Jones. Well, I've got the 200, and I was in the... I made the top of the averages most runs in the one day and I remember I had a bad year that year for Victoria and I tried everything and look, could I get past 50? Not in your life and that 200 was my first first class 50 for the year even though I made big scores in the one day and the last game was here at the MCG and just be uh, against WA and Ian Redpath made me 12th man before walking out to bat uh, before we went out and um, 
I didn't know what. I thought the end of my tour was finished, uh, 89 tour. So I just went back inside and I was about to... I was just going to retire, give up. I can't believe I've just made 200 for Australia and then make me 12th man for Victoria. And then the phone call was stacking on the phone and then he asked for to speak to Redders. And there was deliberation and cause and, and then Redders turned to me, you're playing. And I was lucky and I got 100, 100 not out just to prove him wrong. I tried everything for Victoria, it just didn't seem to work and I went, went, to the, went to, uh, on the greatest tour of all time in the 89 Ashes. Well, the third test at Birmingham was just unbelievably wet. Torrential rain, I remember guys sliding across the, uh, the, the covers. There was just puddles everywhere and for the whole, I think, the whole five days of the test match, unfortunately, was incest by rain, so it was a hard match to actually get your teeth into. I think I batted on the, the first four days of the actual test and uh, you know and I brought it, my mate Ian Stanley come over and I made a duck, my last innings I made a duck at uh, Lords and I said to him come over mate just give me a bit of motivation I want to get a hundred and get my teeth into this series and he come over and he said well I've made all the effort now make a hundred and I was lucky enough to get 150 odd which is the highest score at, at Birmingham beating I think Neil Harvey. Booney wasn't particularly happy um, they talk about playing straight well I remember Jarvis bowling a delivery to me and was up and I thought well I'll jump on this and I jumped on it, didn't have much time to reflexes, and it hit his boot, ricocheted on the boot. <laughs> Booney thought it was past him, he thought about started to run, and went onto the stumps, and fortunately Booney was <laughs> run out well. He said, I'm always running, worried about getting run out with you, so he wants to back up a little bit and pinch a yard, and uh, he said, well, you're going to have to run to my pace from now on. So uh, I never ever ran Booney out after that. Yeah, it was just a good game for me. I, I made a, a team plan for myself. When it, if they bowl them, anything on middle or leg stump, I'm going to whack them through mid-wicket and uh, or through mid on my uh, signature shot, so to speak. So I kept bowling it there. And I remember Angus Fraser playing his first test match for England. Uh, he's bowling to me and I whipped him through mid-wicket for two fours. And I just mentioned to him as I walked past him, weren't you at the team meeting? Don't bowl on my legs. And he bowled on my legs and hit me for another four. Then David Gower yelled out to him, don't bowl on his legs. So I think he got the message. I think I got uh, 80 odd or 90 in the session uh, from, tea to, uh, from tea to stump. So I don't think I've ever struck the ball better in a test match. I just everywhere I, they bowled the ball or anywhere I wanted to hit it, it just went. Well, that's a handsome way to get off the mark for Dean Jones. You hit it a bit into the ground, but then you get some top spin, I think, Tom, don't you? Yes, like a little bit of hook on a golf shot. Yeah. Well, the man at Deep Square, Capel, lost it. I suspect never saw it from the moment he left the bat. Sixtieth over of the innings. Oh, what a terrific shot from Border. Stevenson just too late in the covers to get down, but it was hit with immense power. Dean Jones, very strong onside, and uh, really Capel has to think about his either his line or his field placings. Six on the offside, three on the on, and this man Jones is extremely strong through that mid on area. That was a strong shot, and so easy. Just leaned on it, and up goes the back, off goes the helmet because Dean Jones has 50. Yes, this could be the 2000th run for Dean Jones. Yes, it is. Well played, Dean Jones. 2000 runs in Test cricket. Of course, 
A statistic not known by the crowd here, so no great eruption of applause. His board is 50. He's worked hard for it. Eight fours. Four more. And fielding really has to be razor sharp under these conditions. The outfield's like lightning. 150 stand up between uh, Border and Jones. Alan Eagleston comes in from the Vauxhall end. And the 300 up now for the loss of three wickets. Field need to watch the single here. Jones is on 99. No need to worry. Well, that's a small did very well. There's still run four. And that is, I reckon, one of Dean Jones' best innings. Nick Cook now from the Vauxhall end. Oh, good shot. He's played no better stroke than that today, I tell you. Now, this was probably the stroke of the day. Just short of a length, running into him. Played with a straight bat through mid-wicket. Piece of cricket that from England. Well, Dean Jones never really at home with himself, and this beautiful delivery leaving him off the pitch, playing a little bit loosely at it, and a superb left handed catch that by David Gower. Tremendous catch. And Jones returned to the pavilion of a beautiful innings. I think uh, one of the best innings we've seen at the Oval for a long time. That will pay particular good memories for me because the way I struck the ball and the ground was fast and, and it's big, it's a bit like the G and Wayne, was a nice hard fast wicket and uh, yeah, it was uh, some good shots there I was happy with. I think the way it kick started for me a little bit was probably the fourth test against the West Indies in 1989 and then with the 200 and my success during the one days in the World Series at that time, um, I think that kick started me into uh, uh, the Poms playing well in the Ashes and then all of a sudden I probably had my two or three best years in international cricket at that stage and uh, it's a wonderful thing. I've always been a confidence player and um, confidence is the biggest thing. I tend to get on a streak. Once I get on a roll it's pretty hard to stop me. Once I miss the boat it takes a full while for me to get out, to get out of it but that's the way I've always played. Yeah, well, Gladstone was bowling off the long run at that stage and I was hitting him pretty well and uh, then he, he, I think he did a groin muscle or something was wrong with him and he said, can I bowl off the, a couple overs off the short run? So he did and then Jack Russell, a little, little wicket keeper, came up and said, I'll keep up the stumps because the ball wasn't bouncing much or anything. So I, I, I played him pretty well for over so and then he bowled a full one down leg side and I tried to whip it and of course I dragged my back foot out. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was one of the greatest stumpings of all time. I think you can tell with Jack Russell carrying on the way he did. Ian Jones with the hands pressed well forward under the pad. Stumped him, great work, beautiful piece of work. That's what he was there for. 
Wakeside stamping. 50 wickets for Gladstone Small. That was all Jack Russell's wicket, that one. That was a fine piece of glove work. Yes, he's uh, been coming up and standing close up and forcing Dean Jones back into his crease. But that really was fantastic work. He whipped the bars off in a flash, and they all enjoyed that. Let's uh, have another look at it down the wicket. He just lifts his ball, and then, in fact, tries to change around and doesn't get back in time. And a little nod of the head there from Dean Jones, realising that he's been done by Jack Russell. And uh, didn't he enjoy that one? Well... I really wanted to make a hundred here at the MCG and never done it in a test match or one day. I got a lot of nineties in that, but never, never caught the big one. And I was well on the way. Uh, it was sixty. It was my best season all up. And I went down the wicket to uh, Raju and snick one into my pads. And I realised the bat patters around, but the ball got lodged in my pads. And immediately I thought, well, I'll just pick it up and throw it down because once it gets lodged in your pads, no matter what happens after that, the ball becomes dead. And so I just picked up Adam Pads and dropped it and went back in the crease. I had Lenny King, the umpire, said nothing of it. Well, I've seen the tapes later on that Richie Benno and Keppel Dev and Sonal Gavaska said I was out. But they don't know the rules. The rules state once the ball immediately lodges in your clothing or your, your padding, the ball is dead. He's an absolute genius, Dean Jones, when it comes to finding strange ways to getting himself out. He was given not out on this occasion, but in my view, with the benefit of the replay, that decision was wrong. Because I'm six foot one, I always tend to have a hassle of facing taller bowlers because you've got to move your eye level a little bit, you know, facing the ball coming off the wicket. And, um, and when they bowl Yorkers like Joel Garner or Court Kirtley or Courtney, um, you always seem to, or Michael Holding for that matter, you always seem to have, a, I had a bit of a problem, as did Greg Chappell. Isn't it funny, all the greatest players have ever played batsmen have all been short. They never had hassles with the taller bowlers. Uh, I think it was Tony Gray, I think, it was, uh, it was a one day at Guyana and appeal for LBW and I thought it was just a ludicrous well i thought it was a bit closer than what it is and so i turned my back to say i'll oh, scoff that appeal that's ridiculous and the ball rebounded back off my pads back to tony and he realized i was about a yard out of my crease and he threw the ball over my shoulder and i, <coughs> I had to put my bat in and i was out run out dean jones again striking the ball with great venom and great success tony gray on the other hand with one ball left has already had 12 runs taken from the over Stays at 12 and that's out. Very good bit of cricket there from Tony Gray. He saw Dean Jones turn his back and walk slowly back towards the crease. He had a look at the stumps. One hit, first time, and Dean Jones is on his way. Well, you can only say that's a little bit of careless cricket there by Dean Jones. He turned his back on Tony Gray. And bang, he's out. That happened straight after being run out in the, in the test match in Guyana. Oh, and what a good one that was. And it's been called no ball. Dean Jones didn't know about it. And now there's an appeal for a run out. And uh, he's been given out by the square leg umpire, umpire Cumberbatch. And uh, that really is a bit unfortunate for Dean Jones. He had a bit of good fortune in the first place. But some quick thinking there by the West Indies fielders. Very quick thinking. How many stupid ways can I get out? Well, Kepler Whistle's supposed to bat three. And uh, I remember, I think I was batting five or six. I only had a couple of 20s up to that stage. And then as the game proceeded, first couple of overs, OB just said to me, Dino, put them on. And Kepler Whistle's was really upset. And uh, it's the greatest thing he ever did for me because we lost a wicket. I went straight in, batted with Steve Smith, played pretty well, lost another wicket. Steve got out, then AB come in, and it was Coco Cabanas. Jones facing Coronado. It's a big hit. Back 20 rows by Dean Jones. A smashed away square of the wicket on the leg side. Oh, what a shot from Dean Jones. That is the short boundary down there. But have a look at this. Smashing it away over the 
initial area of six there and almost into the grandstand proper lovely blow six ball AB actually bats when he, he breaks his bats, his handles, and actually get a real whippy sense. And particularly, that's a very good type of bat to have, batting in Adelaide, because he's got the short boundaries on the sides. And uh, I think he's hitting a bloke called De Silva, and he's just clubbed them everywhere. And he was just, he was in really good nick at that stage. And anything we wanted to do, we wanted to, you know, we just did. He was quite fit then too, so he ran the quick twos for you and all that. And he was just fabulous to bat with. And, uh, and being a left-hander as well, uh, they started to bowl on the legs with the left hand right hand combination and uh, we just had an absolute birthday. Six. Big hit. That's his third six and that was a big one too. Alan Border latching on to anything on leg stump and smashing it away. Two fifty up here for Australia in the forty-fourth over, and Dean Jones has reached a half century. John to Jones. Jones goes for it and gets it. Good shot, all on the ground. Got the tremendous power. Playing the perfect innings, Dean Jones with his captain. He hit it so well, the fellow down there only had about 10 yards to move and suddenly it was thundering into the boundary. Crowd chanting already for the 100. There it is, well played Alan Border. Enormous roar around the Adelaide Oval. Border's second 100 in this competition. Silver says well played and it certainly was a fantastic innings. And just off 78 deliveries. Losing a couple of quick wickets in the 90. Alan Border coming in at the floor of Steve Smith's wickets. And that last banner just about spelling, spelling it up. Pure magic. And he chips it away nicely. That's four. That's a glorious shot. That's one of his best shots, in fact. Beautifully played. And Mr. Knight, who was looking for that Yorker that we've seen in bowls pretty successfully throughout this competition, but just over pitching a little bit. And Dean Jones, good timing, whipping it right away off that leg stump. There's no fine leg down there for the pace man, which is a little bit of a mistake. Full toss. Goes over, she goes. Into the fence on the full almost. Four more. Ratnaika just losing his control now. And put away in the previous ball with a good shot. This one a real gift. Dean Jones just helping it on its way. Nelly went over, just one bounce and over. It's a very productive over once again for Australia. Great shot, made room, punched it through cover. Four more, well played Alan Border. 17 runs off the over from Rumish Ratnaika. The crowd's gone mad. It's two for 278. At six, over she goes. Towards Victor Richardson Gates. The crowd are loving it. Second six for Dean Jones. Both through the mid-wicket area. And the fifth big hit today to clear the boundary. And all coming around about the same area. That square leg, mid-wicket area. Short boundaries, and Dean Jones plonking it right over for the big one. Gone again. That's a big hit. It's in the air for a long time. Over she goes. The crowd's gone wild at mid-wicket. They're having a feast today. That's probably the biggest hit of the day so far. The others have gone square, but that one went down to just wide of mid-on. It's a long boundary down there, but he hit that one beautifully. Gave it everything. Went a long way up and went a long way as far as distance was concerned. The, player, the crowd lapping it up. Full pitch, he goes for it, there's a man out there, he's under it. 
Misses it. Four runs. Another one goes down, but Jones moves to 95. A let off. A full toss. He kisses his bat. Rightly so. Uwe Karanane having a bit of a nightmare period out there. The ball's been following him. About the last ten overs, and Dean Jones could have quite easily been out. A little bit of luck there. Full toss. It was a presentation to him. He didn't move. He was waiting to see if it was going to get through. Well, it goes for it. It's a big one. There she goes. Crash for more. Two for 316. Crowd chanting Dean Jones. 96. Only six, they'll go for two. It's out of into the silver. It's going to be close if the throw's good. Border home, well run, Alan Border. Goes through Rumish Rat Nike like a rugby tackle. And Jones moves to 98. I remember the last ball. <laughs> I had my chance to get it early in that over. It was the last over, last ball. And I can't remember who bowled it, but the Sri Lankan bowler bowled it. And I tried to whip it through him down leg side. And anyway, I missed it. Maybe thought, well, I will run for anyway. And the umpire called it. <laughs> <laughs> and I finished on 99 not out. I was thinking, oh, I can't believe it. Record partnership for the third wicket. Jones on 99. The final delivery. Doesn't get it. It's a wide. Oh, and he hasn't got strike. They shouldn't have run. They've crossed. What a mistake. They crossed on a wide. Would you believe that? Dean Jones on 99. Crossed on a wide and loses the strike. No one Porter then just motioning to Dean Jones to go through, but it was already a dead ball. So unfortunate for Dean Jones. He has got one last chance. If this was a wide or a no ball, he may get the strike back. But a little bit of disappointment down there for the youngster. Water goes, beats mid off, comes back for the second. So uh, the 50 overs, it's two for 323. What a performance. I think it put me on the map, the, fa the fact that I can actually take him on, um, running between wickets, the way I can work the ball. Uh, I took a lot out of that game to actually to start as a, a, as a structure, the way I start my innings and all that type of thing. It was very important innings for me. Hog to Ratnayaka. In the air, someone running back. This is a difficult catch. And he takes it, and takes it well. Lucky enough to take a really good catch too. And isn't it amazing, once you start to get a few runs, you start to become a bit more relaxed in the field. And he, he, he drilled one too, and I actually had to stick one and stuck the mitts out, and they caught it. So it was a good game for everyone. Let's have another look at this. One hit away high on the onside. Dean Jones having to turn his back on the ball there. Notice how he had to move away, keeping his eye on the ball all the time. And that's a good catch. Thirty-three one-day internationals for Dean Jones, and he starts very confidently. Should be an easy three there, the way Dean Jones runs. In fact, uh, if Jeffrey Marsh had got a bit of a move on earlier on in the running, they would have got four. It was a really hot day and it was nice flat track. The wicket was wide and uh, I was in good form then. And, uh, you know, and confidence is just those things. And once I get on a bit of a roll, I remember I hit Beefy for a big one over mid wicket. And uh, I remember I wanted to sweep John Embry, just actually lapping for four, but actually threw it up. And so I said, well, I'll give this the kitchen sink. And uh, it's always nice to see one disappear over a uh, camera at that time. It was good. Well, Gatting has got great hands. What's this? A lusty swing, not a good swing at all. Wasn't too far to Gatting's left. But down it goes. Dean Jones just need to harness a bit of that aggression. So oh, he's hit that. It's going straight down the ground. Will it be over? It's six. A beautiful shot from Dean Jones. Just short of a length it was, and he heaved it over the boundary of square leg, just what the doctor ordered. 
They're both are getting some of his own medicine back. That was a beautiful pull shot. It was short. Jones very strong with that bottom hand, gripped it square. It went like a bullet straight over the fence at square leg. There it goes. Zoom. Crash. And that's a good hit. That's four runs, and that's beautifully struck by Jones. He's really taking the attack to the Englishman. In the previous over against Simon O'Donnell, Gladstone Small looked almost unplayable. He had almost arrogantly spanked that one over the cover field for four. What a great shot. After 40 overs, Australia 5 for 185. It's a 49 over game. That's well hit. It clears Chris Broad and the fence. So a great over for Australia. Dean Jones moves uh, ever closer to a century. His first ever, it would be. He has got a 99 not out. He's now on 98. Marvellous hit. The umpires are signalling four now in the background. Ball just hit the top of the fence. De Freitas. There it is, a century for Dean Jones. innings from Dean Jones. Only 123 balls faced. Great ovation here from the crowd, but he has to keep going and he has to pull off something quite sensational over the next uh, two or three overs. Embry. be a shell ultra classic catch he took a blind to get rid of Alan Border in the test match that was something else he judged it perfectly for a moment or two and then suddenly the ball was going over his head and would have bounced just in front of the pickets marvellous catch Third man won't get that. Beautifully timed. Jones playing in the same sort of form he played in that McDonald's Cup match when he got a century. In trouble, David Gow. A bubble, and he's got it. And that could be the last of the Australian effort with three real bunnies to come. It's been a great performance by Dean Jones, but it ends with that catch by David Gow. He sliced it. It was more of a wild shot than some of the other excellent strokes he's played. But he had to keep going. And, uh, Gow's heart would have left a long way in the air there. Great ovation from Dean Jones from this crowd which is a record for the ground since the changes have been made here and they're all on their feet to applaud the Australian batsman as he goes back to brave innings seven for 214 it was good to get the breakthrough in one day it's because you know hundreds are very important they put your name around the world they give you a bit of a reputation and uh uh, not that many people make them, only Desi Haynes or Viv was actually getting a lot of hundreds at that stage, not many Australians were, so uh, that's the way it worked out for me, it was good. Well this could be out, had to be out, 
suicidal run, pushed into the offside, the bowler himself picking it up, and uh, as cool as anything, Gladstone Small having all the time in the world just to throw the stumps down. That really was For a powerhouse guy in one-day cricket, I don't think I've ever seen a better player than Simon O'Donnell. Without doubt, he's hit every great fast bowler Always over the heads of six. And me Always running out Simon place. was one of the most stupid things I've ever done, because that means I had to do it, and I didn't have the right stick nor the right power in my hand at the time. Simon O'Donnell leaves the whacker, and that now exposes uh, well, quite a, a problem of the tail. Oh, it was mainly the Peter Taylor, or, or Mark Taylor should be in the team, and we all thought that, um, we just thought that Mark Taylor was going to get picked before we got over, and then Peter Taylor turned up, then Greg Matthews said, well, hang on, there's two off spinners, and, well, he's going to be 12th man, and Greg was made 12th man, and there was just so many different things were happening. Um, we've already been beaten 2-0, and uh, we won the toss, and uh, Greg Ritchie happened to ha sacrificial lamb, he had to open the batting, he didn't have an opener, and... Uh, Got a nick down leg side, I remember was given not out, of Steve Randall, and, um, and went on to make a, a good 120 on the first day. Then Peter Taylor batted really well with me uh, the second day for a slow period of time. Then Merv helped me out, and we ended up making 184. I did. So it was, it was my first test century on home soil, which is a big thing for me. Here's Gladstone Small. Brilliantly taken. Appeal for a catch down the leg side. The Englishman can't believe it. Not out, says umpire Randall. Brilliantly caught down the leg side by Richards. Was it bat? Was it pad? Umpire Randall says pad. Well, Jack Richards was in no doubt. This here looked as though it came off the pad. And so it did off the top of the pad. No question about that. Unless it happened that there were two nicks, one off the edge and one off the pad. Darren slashes it. Embry gets a touch. Thick edge. They kept Jones quiet. And he almost paid the penalty. Certainly went for that. Embry got his hand to it. Jones shakes his head. One of the few mistakes by Embry in the court. It's a bit of line. Very attacking shot from Jones there. Embry, who's pulled off a couple of good catches this summer. It's too far to his right. Great catches, win matches. Certainly a chance, but down it goes. Well, that's beautifully played. Dean Jones whipping that one away behind square on the leg stump. That one pitched just outside leg stump, or perhaps on leg stump. A little bit of an outswinger, and what a lovely shot from Dean Jones. When he gets them right, he looks a player of world-class Dean Jones. And that one was beautifully turned off his legs into those wide open spaces. That backward square leg. Both of them the bowler. Shy at the stumps and he would have been out by miles. Well, Gatting was a little bit casual there. I don't think that he realised how far out of his ground Dean Jones was. All he had to do was hit and Dean Jones had given it up. In fact, it was Gower who came along. And uh, have a look at this, how far out of his ground he is as he lets it go. Gower very quick across the ground, but he's got a problem with that right shoulder. And he had plenty more time, in fact, to take aim and try and hit the base of the stumps. Jones really misjudging that one. And Philippe Edmonds gets his first chance of the day. Just short of the boundary. Pretty well hit, that one. It's a long boundary out there towards the hill and it only bounced once before it went into the fence. Border, one of the few players in the world that uh, really enjoys going over the top on the offside. Plenty of vacant grass out there. Pinch hit, that one's beautifully struck. Been waiting 
after that. The bounce in this pitch has been very even today. Jones has got to the stage where he can trust what's happening out there. It's a beautiful shot by Dean Jones, picking that ball up very early. And uh, as I was just saying, both of them not quite with his usual zest. Dean Jones having plenty of time to get in position and pull that ball away for four. Embury the ball to Jones. There it is, he's got it. Embury won't be pleased at that, but Jones will be. The ball is still racing away down there to third man. Three to Dean Jones, a century for Australia, in Australia. Good effort. He's played well right through this series and in the one day as a very fine performance from Dean Jones. That was a splendid batting performance. Thoroughly deserved honour for a very conscientious player. I got a 94, I think, against uh, the Poms at Adelaide and I got out hooking, so I was very careful uh, to make sure that uh, I got a hundred in Sydney, but uh, I remember I was in the nineties and we lost three wickets with the second with the second new ball. Um, Zura, uh, uh, Wellham got out, uh, Stevie Wall got out, and uh, and that took my mind off about making hundreds. And um, but I, got, I finished off in the last over. I think I hit Dilly on the on the first day for a couple of big fours off the last over and saying, look, I'm here. And I had a pretty good season up to then anyway, making hundreds in the one days and. And I think I've got 500 runs in the series against the Poms anyway, so it was a nice way to finish off. Richard Hadley, I learnt more off him than any other cricketer I've played with or against. Uh, he, he had a go at me in the press, he had a go at me on the ground, little nips and you know, snipes he did at me. But he taught me that the, the greatest, if you find the strength in a player, you'll find his weakness. And he got me out three times in my test career, and uh, it's amazing. Kurt Leambro, uh, sorry, uh, Big McGrath got out uh, Brian Lara eight times in the last test series against the West Indies, and we, what we called his, it was his bunny, put some ears on him. Well, Richard Hadley got me out three times, and they knighted him. Oh, I couldn't work it out. So, but he he was he was he was special. And and one thing about Richard Hadley in one day is, his strength is he can bowl line and length better than anyone else in the world. His weakness is. He can't do anything else. So therefore, I started charging him because he couldn't drop it a lot short of a length. And I kept charging because I thought he'd become predictable. And I was whacked him for a few big sixes at, uh, at Auckland. It's probably my best one day knock for ball striking that I ever played. Jones gives him the charge. That's a good shot back over the head of Richard Hadley. Basil with the big chase on down towards the side screen. And they've scampered through for three. Oh, that's a huge hit. That's six runs by plenty. Ten metres over the boundary. Magnificent hit. Big hits over the top of right. Down to the line for four. Dean Jones goes to 29. 61 for one. Jones over the top to Hadley. Over the fence. Border, Jones down the pitch, over the top, over mid-wicket. Here's Hadley to Jones. And he's caught in bowling. No, he's not. They're playing. <laughs> Nicely placed. Chase on here for John Bracewell out towards the boundary at mid-wicket. Lovely timing too, wasn't it? I mean, he didn't, he didn't do more than push that, and he fairly whistled away over the grass. Morrison to Jones. He goes high over mid-wicket again. That could be six number four. It is. This is unbelievable from Dean Jones. He wasn't too happy. It was his last appearance for New Zealand ever. And uh, I think I hit him for four or five sixes in that, that, particular, that particular innings. And uh, I remember as I hit a four to end the match or something, and I got my 100. I started running off the ground to yell at him because he's been abusing me in the press again at the, in New Zealand. And I was saying, hey, mate, pay back in full. You were you owed that for a long time. It's good to do it here. And he, he heard me, but he kept running. He didn't, didn't flinch to me, so.
Well, Curly at that stage was bowling what we call into a shoebox. We couldn't move him off him. Like, I didn't at the time, didn't have the confidence to charge him, like create my own presence on him, try to do certain things to get him off line and length. And I said to AB before the match, I said, he wears white sweatbands, big ones, but this big, and, and wears red ones to the test matches. Now, here's one guy, he comes in, he shakes the ball. And it gives a bit of a deception from where the ball actually come in, where Donald and these kind of guys come in, you can see the ball out of the hand. So the wristband doesn't come in, but it's like a salt and pepper shake. He shakes his hand around. And I said, right, I'm going to say, can I tell him to whip him off? And Simo and AB both said, OK, do it. And as we lost to Wigan, I'm walking out. I can hear the guy saying, oh, but he's not going to do it, is he? <laughs> and I'm thinking, yes, I am. So I told him to rip him off and... Uh, he didn't say too much. It was more Richie Richardson getting into his ear. But I tell you what, those next three balls, jeez, <laughs> were they quick? And uh, I could see Mark Taylor at the other end saying, "Well, serves yourself right." And uh, he didn't get me out though. He got he got six others out, but he didn't get me out. The tide test was very important at Madras. Now Chennai, it's um, it's my first test match, my third test match, but my first test match back from two years. Um, I hadn't made that many runs, batting at number three, twenties and thirties. I've been working with Simo with my new technique of going to the spinners. And, um, God, it was hot. You know, it was 40 degrees, close to 100% humidity. Uh, it was the toughest game of cricket I ever played. And um, I'll have some wonderful memories. I can't remember after the first day. I, I got to 100 odd and I can't really remember too much. And little bits where I kept vomiting all the time and I remember one particular time I think it was on 160 I said to AB I've had enough and he said we'll get a real tough Australian out here we'll get a Queensland we'll get fat cat Greg Ritchie and I'm thinking oh I'm staying and it was the best thing I ever did he just said the right thing to me at the right time so I walked off and but I kept stopping the game because I kept spewing all the time and I didn't want to you know test match cricket shouldn't be seen to be like this and uh I lost seven kilos in the day. It took me th uh, nine months to put it back on. And even now, even if we have a hot day when I play golf or I play cricket, I still have a psychological start. My hands start to get shaky and get pins and needles thinking it's got to go through that again. So I have to go through my procedures to stop it from happening. Well, the vision you probably see from the tight test was, well, not that great, you know, a bit blurry and a bit blotchy, but uh, I think it adds to the mystique about the game, you know, and uh, everyone just remembers the tide test as in 1961 Australia versus the West Indies. Well, I'll tell you right, the, the toughest game of all time was played at that time. Four guys were sent off, not sent off, but were carried off almost through uh, dehydration. You know, you've got guys like Greg Matthews who took 10 wickets. You get, um, Ray Bright getting five wickets in the last session of the game. Um, that was the game that created the new culture for Australian cricket. Alan Board had 70 odd test matches, and the next best one had three or four test matches, I think it was Booney. And from then on, we had a, a, it was a draw of the series, we come home stronger, even though we lost 2-1 against the Poms here in 86. That was the start of the new culture, the new kids had to learn what it's like to play cricket at, at test cricket. And I tell you what, Madras not only will be special in my heart, but it will be special in blokes like Jeff Marsh, Boone, Steve Waugh, um, you know, these particular players to know how tough test cricket is all about. Nice is 14. Jones not off the mark and uh, he's had 17 deliveries out there. The trouble here. I think we had a very good team in the, in the 80s and one day as and Jeff Marsh he had the fitness to bat the first 50 overs. He mightn't have had the four, he could hit fours and sixes, but at the end, he could hit fours and sixes just as good as anyone else, I tell you. And the good thing about Swampy is that he actually could work a single to get you back on strike. Ball from the outer end, but from the members' end, it's to be Winston Benjamin. Good shot. Hopped right into that. Forty-three on the board after fourteen. Courtney Walsh fumbles, and they get two. Just. 
Yes, one gets the feeling that it's only a question of time before we see a run out here. Jones on that occasion taking advantage of this fumble. He was down at the non-striker's end having played that shot. Here's the fumble. And back he goes and Jones was very quick. could cut that one off magnificent shot Marsh blazing this one through the offside it was just short of a length he hit it on the up and we often talked about good things in the middle. He's very intense type of character. And, uh, uh, you know, I think he got the best out of himself for what he was. He's a, a tremendous vice captain for the country. And he drives it right through Gladstone Small's hands. Beats getting it mid-off. 12 runs off that over. Australia really racing along. One for 180. Here he is now, certainly the new star, and Jeff Marsh is not too far behind him. Clips that away for four, and this is a tremendous partnership between these two as Australia move on to one for 189. It's a very good stroke, and Gatting's got problems out there with this placement of the field. These bowlers don't back him up if he's got that uh, man in at fine leg. Ball very quickly race away to the boundary with that man close in having no chance at all. Now, he's been put back. And his big one in the test match at Sydney last week. Just one run needed, he's 99. And that's it. Dean Jones, 100. David Boone made 400 in 12 months for Australia in uh, test matches. We're not uh, out of January yet, and Jones has made 400s in 1987. Very important time, I think it was the second dig of about four for 80 odd, and he hooked one. And I started running down the hill as there is a huge hill at Lords. And I could see it, I've, I just said, just when it was about six feet away, that's out. It could have been four down before the interval, but Gower survived this. He's got, he's got him, yes, he's dropped it, no! Then dropped it, fell out. Oh, just made a complete meal of it. And I picked the ball up and threw it in, and you should have seen AB had the cap over his head, like thinking, oh no, this is a very important. He went on to make a hundred, and Big Merv got him out around the corner, caught by AB, and I remember I said to him straight away, when I dropped the catch, sorry, mate, he, says, he looked at me and said, don't you want to win? And I thought, whoop, I want to win, pal. And I was lucky enough to take a couple of other catches here as well. So we won the game, it was very important. It's very important at the whole tour to make sure he gets some runs and to get some sort of form quality in the first test. And I took my, uh, I didn't wear a helmet. It was a one day, it was a slowish, sluggish wicket. And a bloke called Tony Pigot, I call him Piggott, went to try to hook him. And, and I went through it. And I'm starting to realise, oh, where's the ball? I should have smacked that. And all of a sudden, I can read readers sitting right on my face. And um, smashed my cheekbone twice here, once there, and once in there. And um, I, I was out for three weeks. In the air, and could be caught. Bracewell. Now, why would Michael Whitney try and do that? The New Zealanders must be absolutely relieved at that. Mike Whitney just come off blocking out Richard Hadley to save a test series against, uh, against New Zealand and uh, had a lot of confidence about his batting then and uh, he needed uh, two runs to get off the last over and didn't even get close, did he? <laughs> He's gone from old gold chocolates to boiled lollies within four days and uh, Tizzy was disappointed after that. Yeah, well, he just had to get bat on it or pad on it or something but he went for the big play and you know, I don't mind that in a way, you know, 
If you have a go, it tends to come off, but unfortunately he didn't have the ability that day. Brisbane, we had to do something. We lost the first couple of games and it was one of my first run-ins with Simo. Um, we had different batting positions. I think Simo might have listened to a little bit of the press saying we'd be become boring and calculating and they could read you quite easily. Uh, so I batted in diff different positions. So before the, that particular match, I said to AB, let's go back to our normal way of playing cricket and let's win the goddamn match. And I batted number three and I remember straight away I wanted to impart my presence. And I remember Srinath coming in to bowl a ball to me and I hit him, hit him right over mid, mid on one of the best sixes I've ever hit. And it also got through Prabhakar. It's the Wacker, um, well, whatever it is, it's uh, a big six, I can tell you that. <laughs> what a shot. More of that, please, Dean Jones. I think that's the Queensland Cricket Association section down there. That might have ended up in uh, the bar down that section of the ground. Oh, well taken. Oh, magnificent shot. Picked it up off the legs and really clobbered it through mid-wicket. That came with a shot from a gun. Again, a very aggressive approach here by David Boone. Ball sliding into the legs. Really on about middle stump. David Boone not mucking around, just picked it up. And away it goes. Man at deep back of square, can't get that. It's a good shot by Dean Jones. Off the meat of the bat, half century for Jones. Very important innings, not just for the right-hander, but also for Australia. Four for 160. And some more. Hit right through the line of the ball, so the new bat seems to have uh, worked the trick for Tom Moody. Right over the infield for four. Australia, five for 198. Good hit. There's a man out there, but he won't get it. That's well struck by Dean Jones. Well, they're trying the faster delivery. Dean Jones onto it straight away, aiming it wide of mid on. Just rolling the wrists on it as he hits through the ball. Works it away from the wide mid on fieldsman. Dean Jones. They're at number six on the list. Yeah. And he struck that beautifully, and that's 16 runs in the over. Four boundary, three boundaries in the over to Jones. Kapildev conceding 16 off it, five for 219. Hit it over the side screen for six, I say. Well, it's going, you beauty, under the dog track for six. Slot right into that mid-wicket area. Beautiful shot from Dean Jones. Well, he really has got to hit through everything now, right to the end of the innings. As he moves on to 90, he uh, got that on the up, was a fraction short, hit through mid wicket. That was where he had to go. There was a gap there. Hit as clean as a whistle. Beautifully struck. Hoik over mid wicket, you call that. Got it on the rise, hit it beautifully. Mr. Bowler be trying to bowl one right up in the block hole. Rather over pitch than under pitch. Doesn't want Dean Jones to get under this one. He's hit that straight down the ground. It's going, no, it's not, it's right in the air. You say, leave it to me, I'll catch it. Yes, he will, he's got it. Jones out. Just for a second, there was going to be chaos there. There was potential for a three-way collision. But good thinking by Prabhakar. He told the all to go away. And he ended up taking the catch himself. There's Mark Prabhakar in. Dean Jones is fine. Innings at 90 with a good catch. It wasn't easy. He went for it, got under it a bit, and there's Prabhaka going back. It was very, very high, and mid-on. And mid-off come in, and Prabhaka at the end does the job. Jones out for magnificent 90. Superb innings. There was a rain, started to get involved with the match, and we only won, won the, I think we won the game by one or two runs. It was Steve War's great throw, I remember, from the boundary. It actually saved us right over the keeper. Oh, Booney was keeping. 
and because the heels busted the finger and, uh, and took the bales off, and it was an important game. The time! It was a disappointing way because I made a lot of runs in the, in, in the season preceding, and, and I started off the series, the one day as in the first, cl uh, first class matches, quite well. And I remember the first test was at Joburg, and I was. Uh, Mark will bust to the farm, batting number four, and I thought I'd be immediately on standby for him. And uh, as it turned out, they put um, Matthew Hayden on. And I thought straight away, well, so he's never batted four for Queensland batting, batting now. Why the hell are they looking at him? And so I immediately thought, they're looking for younger guys from now on. So I told AB after that match that this is going to be my last series. You're looking for other young guys. And he understood that. For six weeks, he tried to talk me out of it, but I stood firm. And then they made me, after two bad decisions, LBW decisions and uh, a run-out situation in Joburg and the one day as, I said, this is going to be my last game at Bulawayo. Uh, not at Bulawayo, at, uh, in, in Orange Free State, Bloemfontein. And, and it was a tough time. And, uh, you know, and, and to retire like that and all that type of thing, I just don't want to be regarded just as a one-day player. I wanted to be regarded as a test player as well. And I thought I'd done enough at that stage. And... I'll go back and play a few years for Victoria and, and that's the way. And I still believe that was the right decision I made. Retirement invariably prompts reflection and for Jones, self-assessment. Hopefully a good test player and um, a guy just gave it all. Really. I've been on the road now for 12 years and um, I've done some fantastic things, met some great people, you know. Um, so I've been to fantastic countries. So, I have no regrets at all about giving it away. It's just, you know, it's just one stage of your life that's finished and uh, you've just got to go on.